Welcome to episode 10 of Monty's Einsight, and in this video we're taking a look at the Sherman Firefly. The Sherman Firefly first entered service in 1944 and was deployed as a way of stopping German armour. And at the time, Germany was very much superior in their tanks, and they pretty much had been throughout the entirety of the war. Most of the British tanks were just unable to get through that really thick, uh, sloped German armour. So the Firefly was introduced. It was a British invention. It was a 17-pounder gun that was attached to the uh, American Sherman chassis, and it was proved to be really effective. Um, it was originally rolled out in roughly one Sherman Firefly to every two Cromwells, um, but then as production increased throughout the war, in some cases it ended up with two Fireflies to one Cromwell. It was just that effective. Um, I mean, at the time, Cromwells have really had very little chance up against the Tiger, they just pretty much had to run for it. Uh, there's a story of a Cromwell driving right up behind a Tiger tank, firing straight into the rear armour and the shells just bouncing off. There's no, not even making a scratch, it just doesn't, it just, it's amazing how, <laughs> how these crews were expected to take on um, these Tiger tanks. But anyway, the Sherman Firefly was introduced um, and it actually proved an effective measure for taking on Germany's superior armour. So in this video what I'm going to be doing is taking a look at War Games Sherman VC Firefly kit and I'm going to look at the, the sprues and the components and I'm going to build it and uh, give my opinions on the miniature. So here we have the Firefly kit and on the front of the box here you can see some artwork of the Firefly in action along with a, another Sherman and also a destroyed Tiger in the background there as well. And flipping the box over we can see uh, the miniature they actually get in this box as well, a little bit of description about um, its use during the war. We also see that we will get two uh, British tank crew models included as well. We get some ideas to where markings um, go on the tank as well, so it's a nice little uh, reference point there. Now let's uh, open this box up and take a look at the contents inside. In front of me here I have the contents of the Firefly box and first of all we have the decal sheet which contains uh, lots of different regimental and also squad markings as well for the Allies. Uh, we've also got the Allied star on there also. Uh, this brings us to the instruction manual, well sheet, and uh, you can see here everything's uh, nicely diagrammed of which pieces go where. However there's one criticism about this, you can just about see it in the light there, there's actually no um, item um, numbering or markings on there, I can't actually see anything. Um, detailed the actual steps. It's quite clear as to which pieces are which, but it would be helpful if there was a little bit of a number or something telling you exactly which one is which. So this brings us to the sprues. Now we have three sprues here and I'll be looking at these individually. The first sprue that we have here features the main hull of the vehicle. You see um, a lot of the storage items have actually been cast onto it. It's all in a single piece here. So you've got um, the entrenching tools there, the spade, uh, pickaxe, um, we've also got a tow cable kind of wrapping itself around there as well. We also actually get the uh, the turret, and you can see it's got the additional armour welded onto the, and sculpted onto the piece itself. We also have the 17-pounder gun there as well. Uh, it's typical for the Firefly. So this brings us to the next sprue. So this sprue contains a lot of different accessories for the tank itself. We can see here we've got the British crew. We've got a choice of two different commanders there. One of them's um, carrying some binoculars, the other one's uh, speaking in his radio. Uh, we also have some additional road wheels, a jerry can there. We have one of the, uh, the, kind of the hedgerow cutters as well the Browning 50 cal, um, some additional track sections that you can weld onto, the, that can be welded onto the tank. Uh, I've got all the little bits of additional ammo uh, box for the 50 cal. We also have uh, the lights and also the side skirts as well that you can see here. Now this brings us to the third and final sprue. Now the final sprue features a lot of the track sections, also the underside of the tank, and also the actual um, the suspension of the road wheels. These all come as single pieces you can see there, and these just sit onto the side. Um, of the other side of the hole there as well. Now one of the things I am quite impressed by is the quality of the sculpts and also the plastic. This is one of Warlord Games' newer sculpts and newer kits and it kind of really shows through the quality compared to some of their earlier ones, especially the original Sherman kits. This is really nice, uh, nice and detailed. The details are very crisp. The plastic feels really nice and solid as well. Um, it's no kind of softening of features or anything. So now that we've looked at all the individual parts, let's get this kit assembled and take a look at the finished piece. And here we have the completed Sherman Firefly. 
Now whilst the instructions were lacking any component identifiers, the actual kit itself was quite easy to build. The components fitted together really nicely and there was no issues with miscasts. Additionally, there was very little in the way of mould lines that had to be removed before assembling this miniature. As I've already mentioned, the details are really crisp and the plastic seems really nice and solid, which is definitely an improvement over some of their earlier vehicle kits. So that was the Sherman VC Firefly tank kit. Uh, let's move on and get an overall summary for this video. So that was the Sherman VC kit, and overall a really nice miniature to build. Um, it should make a really nice addition to my British force as well, give me some really hard hitting anti-tank power as well. I, I kind of prefer it overtaking the, um, the Achilles or even um, the Archer as well. I mean, in terms of the Archer, the Sherman VC Firefly, I think it's the same amount of points, but um, if you buy the option to remove easily caches fire, then it's 305 points, which is 10 points more expensive than the Archer, but it's not open top then. So it gives you a little bit more uh, kind of robustness. And the same goes for the, um, the M10, the Achilles as well. I mean, that's an open top tank. It's a little bit cheaper, but it's also a lighter tank as well. So I really like the Sherman Firefly as well. It just, it just looks nice and it kind of fits into that aesthetic of the um, 3rd Infantry Division as well. It goes sit really nicely against uh, a couple of Cromwells. Um, if I want to do a tank force as well. So, uh, thanks for watching this video, it was much appreciated. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Do let me know what you thought about the video in the comments below, and if you haven't done so already, check out the previous videos in the Monty's Ironside series, and subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my future videos. So until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.